So we know that our cells can actually break down fatty acids to form ATP molecules and this process is known as beta oxidation. So within the matrix of our mitochondria, activated fatty acid molecules are completely oxidized to form acetyl coenzyme A molecules and these acetyl coenzyme A molecules can then be used to actually generate high energy ATP molecules. Now the question that I'd like to discuss in this lecture is the following. How many ATP molecules can the cells of our body actually generate when they completely oxidize and break down fatty acids? Now the answer to this question actually varies and it depends on the length of that hydrocarbon chain within that particular fatty acid. And so as our example we're going to use the most common fatty acid that we find in humans known as palmitic acid. And palmitic acid contains 16 carbons within that particular hydrocarbon chain. Now, remember that each time a fatty acid undergoes a beta oxidation process, we shorten that fatty acid by two carbon atoms. And so what that means is because we have 16 carbon atoms within palmitic acid, more specifically within the activated version of palmitic acid we call palmitoyl coenzyme A, then that means a total of seven cycles of beta oxidation will basically cleave the molecule and break it down into acetyl coenzyme A units. And to see exactly why, uh, why seven, let's take a look at the following diagram. So we begin with our activated version of palmitic acid, palmitoyl coenzyme A, and we have one, two, three, four, all the way to 16 carbon atoms within that hydrocarbon chain. Now after six cycles of beta oxidation, we basically release six acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And we have a molecule left over that contains four carbon atoms. So we have the C4 ketoacyl coenzyme A. Now if this molecule undergoes one more beta oxidation, then we produce these two identical acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And so that's why we need six plus one more, so seven cycles of beta oxidation to produce a total of six, seven, and eight acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Now acetyl coenzyme A molecules are not the only uh, energy bearing molecules that are produced within the beta oxidation process. We also generate one NADH molecule and one FADH2 molecule every time the beta oxidation process actually takes place. So recall that each cycle of beta oxidation uses up one water molecule, one FAD, one NAD plus, and one coenzyme A. In the process, we generate one FADH to one NADH and one H plus ion. So that basically means if we sum up all these seven reactions, this is the net reaction that we're going to get. So we incorporate, we input one palmitoyl coenzyme A, seven FAD molecules, seven NAD plus molecules, seven water molecules, and seven coenzyme A molecules. And what happens is we essentially form, so we have six, seven, eight, eight acetyl coenzyme A molecules, seven FADH2, seven NADHs, and seven H plus ions. So this is the total number of molecules that we form after seven cycles of beta oxidation. Now, the next question is, how many ATP molecules can we actually form from these molecules formed here? So let's begin with FADH2 and NADH molecules. These two molecules, once we form them in the beta oxidation process, they move on onto the electron transport chain. And remember from our previous discussion that we said, a single FADH2 molecule generates about 1.5 ATP molecules, while a single NADH molecule generates 2.5 ATP molecules. Now, what about the acetyl coenzyme A molecule? Well, the acetyl coenzyme A molecules, once they're formed in the beta oxidation process, they are incorporated into the citric acid cycle. And remember that a single acetyl coenzyme A molecule that is fed into the citric acid cycle generates three NADH molecules, one FADH2 molecule, and one GTP molecule. 
Now, because we have 8-acetyl-coenzyme A molecule goes, molecules going into the citric acid cycle, we generate a total of 8 multiplied by each one of these two coefficients. So we have 24 NADHs, 8 FADH2s, and 8 GTP molecules. Now, the GTP are basically transformed into ATP via the activity of a specific type of enzyme found inside our cells. And these two molecules basically end up on the electron transport chain. So let's tally up the total number of molecules produced. So we have seven FADH2s here, and we have eight multiplied by one, so eight FADH2s here. So seven plus eight, that gives us 15 FADH2 molecules. We have eight multiplied by three, so 24, plus seven, that gives us 31 NADH molecules. And we also have the eight GTPs. Now, recall in our discussion on the activation of fatty acids, we said that two ATP molecules are actually used up when we transform palmitic acid into its activated form, palmitoyl coenzyme A. So we also actually use up two ATP molecules when we activate the fatty acid. So we have to take that into account when we actually sum up our results. So, how many ATP molecules are generated when 31 of these NADHs are actually oxidized along the electron transport chain? So we have 31 NADH molecules multiplied by 2.5 ATP per NADH molecule that gives us 77.5 ATP molecules. Now 15 multiplied by 1.5 gives us 22.5. 8 multiplied by 1, because we have a 1 to 1 conversion from GTP to ATP, that gives us 8. And we also use up 2 ATP molecules during the activation process, so we have to subtract the 2. And so we have 108 minus 2, and that gives us a net total of 106 ATP molecules are actually generated when the most common type of fatty acid in humans, palmitic acid, is completely oxidized into its constituents within the matrix of the mitochondria of our cells.